said you danced for 15 years after that? Yeah. So, so let me ask you, because I'm such a firm believer, and I preach this all the time, especially to our audience. Um, our audience, are, they're comprised of dreamers and, and people who are trying to better their life. They, 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 they are entrepreneurs. They're people who are trying to achieve high level success. But I always say, you have to trust the process. And what I mean by that is you don't know why God has you on the journey that he has you on. You don't know, because in your case, your pops pass, <clears throat> you have a collapsed lung, you get injured. And on a dare, somebody says, I dare you to take this dance class in which you fall in love. And what I mean, or where I'm going with this is, is this also where you fell in love with the arts? Because I know dance and, and uh, theater and acting, they, they're all part of the family of the arts. So is this where you found that same love for acting? I, I believe so. I think it was twofold. I, I remember the first time I performed, well, I even have to trace back. My father used to have me perform, you know, part of my training was getting in karate class very early. And my father used to go around and do these lectures and speak at different organizations. And before he spoke, he would always have me open up with a kata, you know, a performance of karate moves. So that might have been my first introduction to performing. But then in high school, I remember I did a poem uh, and I was in love with the, the English teacher and I did this poem, uh, Maya Angelou's Why the Cape Bird Sings. And I remember learning this poem and, and performing it and it just felt extremely empowering. So I think that was a seed that was planted. And then of course, dance, yes, that was another seed that was planted. Yeah, it's all, it's all performing. It, you know, it, it's, it's amazing that these seeds that are planted in us, you don't know where they're gonna blossom, where, you know, your life, you can look back and say, I got it now. Mm -hmm. You know, cause hindsight is always 2020. But sometimes you just really do have to trust the process. You go on. <clears throat> How long are you in the service? Um, a funny thing is originally I wanted to be a Navy SEAL, but um, I just remember the commitment, commitment being too long. So I joined the Marine Corps uh, as a reservist. Um, so I did about a year and a half of training, but when I came home and was about to enroll in college, that's when we, I got the letter about Desert Storm. So then my, my reserve unit was activated and we were sent to Kuwait. Wow, how long were you over there? How many tours? Uh, I was only in Kuwait for one tour, about seven, eight months. You know, and before we go further, Thank you for your service. I told you that offline, but you know, this is, we're getting into the part of the story that really, uh, you know, I, I was like, I like this dude. <laughs> so I, I want to kind of move it along because I need to get to, to the firefighter years. Mm -hmm. When you come home, I know for a stint, you were a CO. Yeah. How was that? And, and where, were you, where, where were you a corrections officer at? Sing Sing. So you up in Austin? Yeah, I was with the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was with everybody from my block. <laughs> That's what I was about to ask you. Like, it ain't no way in the world that you you up in Sing Sing wearing the uniform and you're not bumping into everybody from the hood. Yes, sir. Oh. But, you know, it, it, two things happen. Um, I'm bumping in everybody from the hood. Uh -huh. But also there's a, a Muslim population in there. They knew my father. Um, so they had a tremendous amount of respect for my father and the mosque I came from. And then also the Imam that replaced my father also worked in the city jails and used to come through Sing Sing too. So I think just because I was Muslim that afforded me some type of protection. Um, and then two, um, yeah, you know, everybody from the block was up in there. I ran, in, I ran into dudes that used to beat me up that I used to hustle with. Um, but you know, that's 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 how it unfolded. Um, and you know, it, it was it was it was a little weird, it was a little dangerous at times. Even 
to this day, I can walk by and I can see somebody and I remember them from, from being in A block or B block. Wow. Um, so um, it just, you know, I, I got out of there <laughs> as quick as I could. <laughs> Okay, what got you out of there? Is is, is it your is is it the job at the in, in in the fire department? Yeah. So what happens when I came home from the Marine Corps? I took corrections, Port Authority, police. Um, I took all of the exams. I didn't take the firefighter exam. The only reason I found out about the firefighter exam was because my brother went to Julia Richmond High School. He came home with a card one day, and I look at the card, and it was like. Uh, from the Vulcan Society. If you want to be a firefighter, call this number. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I like this dirty adrenaline type of stuff. I was like, I want to be a firefighter too. So I just filled out the card and sent it in. So corrections called me first. Um, but, you know, then when the fire department called me, I was like, I'm out of here. I'm going to switch over to the fire department. So I just, I just left and moved over. Okay. I got to ask because you're a real, you were a real firefighter. Like you weren't on the job for a year or two, passing through. You retired from the department, correct? Yeah, I did 20 years. 20 years, help me on it, because I don't know too many black firefighters. And yeah. when I was researching you, you are the real deal. You got the whole get up on the, the, the heavy jackets, the, Fireman's had to hold and used to drive. Yeah, so what happened is um, that was one of my attractions to the fire department was I've, I've always been attracted to things where there ain't no black people. <laughs> you know, even the Marine Corps was the last branch of service to integrate. Um, so in the fire department, one of the things my mentor told me when I was interested in, he was like, look, this is one of the best jobs in the world, but less than 2% are African-American. And I was like, wow, usually when there's not a lot of black folks, you know, probably is a great job and I want to enjoy those benefits. Um, so out of 10,000 New York City firefighters, less than 200 are black. Um, so uh, I was only black in my firehouse for, for a number of years. But um, what happens is after you get a lot of time, you then can become what they call a seated chauffeur. You can become a chauffeur, usually senior men are chauffeurs. Um, so I just worked my way up went back to school. They sent me to school as a sh uh, to get chauffeur training. And then I just drove the fire truck for, for the last couple of years. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.